sea anemones are one of the simplest groups of animals and when some people look at them they look at that circle of tentacles and they think they're actually looking at the petals of a flower and not even at an animal. But in fact anemones are very interesting organisms with some fascinating behavior patterns. Some of them can actually drag themselves apart and divide into two. Some of them are territorial and defend their, uh, their rock pools against invading other anemones. And some of them are solar powered. They have algae inside their bodies and they just spread out their tentacles and photosynthesize and then don't even need to eat. So we're going to go and take a closer look at some anemones on the shore here today. Got something interesting there. What's there? Oh look, it's a lovely big sea anemone. So sea anemones are one of the simplest groups of animals and they have a very basic body structure. So the body is just like a bag with a sticky underside which is called the foot and then at the top of the column of the sea anemone is a ring of tentacles and in the middle of that ring of tentacles is the mouth. There's only one body opening so the food goes into the mouth and then the mouth basically acts as the anus as well. So the poo comes out of the mouth again mm. when digestion is finished. And there's no, um, there's no intestines or stomach. There's just one cavity inside the bag of the animal. And there's some gonads, but so there's no head, there's no brain, there are no eyes, there's no kidney or liver or heart. It's a very, very simple conglomeration of cells basically. <laughs> an, an eating and breathing bag. An uh, eating and breathing bag, yeah. So those tentacles, uh, when they come into contact with something, they, they pull in. Is that how they catch all of their food? So the unique thing about all sea anemones and their relatives like corals is that they possess stinging cells. So that's the defining characteristic of the group. And those stinging cells are on the tentacles and actually fire into, like little darts, they fire into the prey and paralyze it. And then it, the anemone can drag the tentacles into the mouth and stuff the food down into, it, into its gut. So do we need to be careful about Ben touching the anemones? <laughs> anemones can actually kill quite uh, substantial animals. And I've had ones in my aquarium of this very species that's in front of me here now. And I've actually seen them eat a shark. What? <laughs> So I had baby sharks yeah. in the aquarium and then they just stumble into the sea anemone and they just instantly paralyzed and the sea anemone just swallowed the whole shark and that was it. No resistance. This particular species in front of us here has the strongest venom of all the sea anemones in South Africa. But uh, it still doesn't have any effect on human beings. So the stinging cells are not strong enough to penetrate through the dead layer on our skin. Uh, one of my colleagues has told me that if you feel the tentacles with your tongue, you can feel the sting. But <laughs> I definitely don't recommend at all that you try that. Don't try that don't, at home. Do not try this at home, because <laughs> you could be allergic to the, to the stings. So everything ha kind of happens in slow motion for anemones? Yes, they're living in the slow lane. Everything happens quite slowly. So they grow slowly, they live long. And some anemones actually have been recorded in aquarium tanks of commercial aquaria for over a hundred years. Same so, anemone. Same anemone. It was collected as an adult and it's still sitting there. So they probably lived for centuries and in fact some of them may be more or less immortal because they can also divide. Like and a then, clone. And then that clone, that baby, may then live for another hundred years. And they just keep going and going. And they keep going again, yes. Hi, thanks so much for watching. Quick question. I'm busy editing this episode and I noticed that according to our YouTube, less than 20% of those of you who are watching right now are actually subscribed to our channel. Hitting subscribe doesn't cost you anything. 
it simply tells YouTube that you like what we're doing, and it means that our new episodes will pop up on your feed. However, it makes a big difference to us, encouraging the algorithm to show our videos to more people. And if you like and comment, well, that helps even more. We love making our content free for you, so please hit subscribe and we will keep making free episodes about our amazing shores. Deal? Let's dive back in. This particular species of anemone, the false plum anemone, is actually known to be territorial. So when you see a whole group of anemones together like this, you'll notice that they're all exactly the same color. And that's because they're clones of one another. So there was an originally one anemone here, and then it split and re-split and form a little colony of genetically identical individuals. So what happens if another anemone comes into this rock pool? If another unrelated anemone comes into the rock pool, then yes, they'll fight with it. And they fight with it using specialized other tentacles, which are beneath the prey catching tentacles, and they're designed specifically to fight with and kill other anemones. So I have, I have quite a nice little story about this because I knew this, I knew these anemones were territorial. So I wanted to have some in my fish tank in my office. So I collected one and put it at one end of the tank on a rock on the sand. Of course, they won't cross the sand, so he couldn't get off his rock at one end of the tank. And then I put another beautiful big anemone on another rock in the middle of the sand at the other end of the tank. And I had them in the tank there for more than 10 years. And then one week I went away to a conference and I left my tank in the care of one of my postgraduate students. And the day before I came back, he thought he'd better clean the tank and he moved the rocks so they were both touching the glass at the back of the tank. And on that very first night, the larger of the enemies moved from his rock onto the glass, across the back of the tank, and then stung and killed his enemy on the other rock. So he'd been waiting there for years and years for that opportunity. Plotting his to, attack. <laughs> to get the tank to himself. <laughs> Dad, I noticed a couple of these anemones are out the water at the moment. Surely that's not good for them. Yes, most anemones have to say submerge, Matt, but remember it's extreme low water of spring tides today. So these guys might be out of the water for half an hour or an hour, once a month or so. But anemones generally have very delicate bodies and they're unable to survive out of the water. There is just one local exception to that, and that's an anemone called the plum anemone. It's called the plum anemone because it has a sort of a dark red plum color, but mostly because at low tide they hang from the rocks like big ripe plums because they're full of water. So they, at high tide they close their mouth tightly and hold a whole little jar of water inside their bodies. And then at low tide they let that drizzle slowly out and then it keeps the body wet and it also, it's like sweat, it evaporates and keeps the body cool. So they're able to live very high in the intertidal and actually feed mostly on insects, in fact. Another fascinating thing about that anemone is it's very difficult for the babies to survive in that upper level. So the babies actually develop into fully grown little, fully developed little anemones inside the parent's stomach. So in with the food, there's just one gut cavity, in with the food you've got these living babies. And sometimes if you just like touch the animal, little baby will pop out of its mouth into your hand. So when the babies are ready, they just come out of the adult's mouth and settle on the rock next to the adult. It's quite an amazing adaptation. So we've got these little groups of anemone babies here together. How do these anemones breed? Almost all anemones actually can breed either sexually or asexually, in other words, just by dividing. So they have an amazing way of asexual division. And the adult anemone, basically, half of its foot starts to move off in one direction, and the other half of its foot pulls away in another direction. And over a period of days, the body just splits along a kind of a break line in the center of the animal and the animal divides into two equal individuals that are of course genetically identical to one another. So they can clone themselves? They can clone themselves, yeah absolutely. So in a group like this you'll very often if you find that they're all actually genetically identical to one another. So these are probably all the same animal genetically. It's just divided and re-divided several times. So you'll often find a group that are together, all exactly the same color. 
Sometimes I've seen this sort of milkiness in the rock pool water coming from the anemones. Is that them breeding? Yes. So you'll get these mass spawning events. So what happens is one individual will spawn and then that will provoke all the other individuals around it to also spawn. So remember, they've only got one body opening, which is the mouth. So out of the mouth emerges either the sperm, or, which is, tends to be white, or the eggs, which tend to be yellow. And then you'll see these all emerging from the anemone's mouths and then mixing in the water. And they'll develop into planktonic larvae, which will float away and establish a colony in a distant site. Um, so what do anemones eat? Yes, anemones might seem to be very simple animals and might even look a bit like plants, but they're actually all carnivores. So they're all meat eaters, but they don't necessarily eat live meat. They, they will kill things if they have the opportunity. If a fish bumbles into their tentacles, they will eat it. But mostly actually they eat uh, carrion. They eat uh, mussels that have been knocked off the rocks by the waves, or sea urchins that have been washed up in a storm, or the carapaces of crabs that have molted. They'll eat any animal material that they can get. So they're basically the scavengers of the rock pool. They very often sit at the lowest point, like the sandy anemones that are so common on the west coast of South Africa. You'll always see them congregating in the gullies where the, the dead material collects and gets tumbled by the waves. So any dead organic animal material, they'll eat it. They're not fussy. And they don't mean much because they're cold-blooded, they don't move a couple of meals a year and they'll be just fine. No three meals a day. <laughs> no three anemones. meals a day for them, no. <laughs> uh, okay, but hang on, you, you mentioned that one anemone has solar panels. Yes. There is one anemone that, well, in fact, there are several anemones that have developed the same trick that corals have, and of course they're related to corals, and that is to incorporate algal cells into their bodies and then just to photosynthesize. But it is actually very unusual that you've got a group of animals which is normally carnivorous, and then they're starting to photosynthesize. So maybe they're not that different from plants after all. There's always one exception <laughs> always to the rule. Always one exception to the rule, yeah. You, just bump into an anemone. And then an anemone. And then just get swallowed. And then just get swallowed. 